Okay, guys, it's, it's very funny, but it's uh, pretty clear to me that you both have some pretty serious compulsions. Number 10, Sandler Family Reunion. Jimmy Fallon left Saturday Night Live in 2004, but over the years has returned numerous times to host or make cameo appearances. This was the case in 2019 when he came back to play Adam Sandler's grandfather in Sandler Family Reunion. Why don't you shut up and say, maybe you. The sketch is a funny bit wherein all of Sandler's family members end up being versions of his past SNL and movie characters. For his part, Sandler has a few moments where he breaks, but the biggest happens when Fallon arrives. <laughs> the instant the two guys turn to look at each other, you can see the huge smiles as they both try to keep it together. But the doctor says it's nothing to worry about. Oh, good. Well, that's yeah. a really Number nine, Family Feud. Usually, it's someone else making Jimmy Fallon crack up during a sketch. But in the case of this one, the person making Jimmy Fallon crack up is, well, Jimmy Fallon. So great. So great. So great. Celebrities playing games. Nothing better. So fun. Am I right on that? The Celebrity Family Feud sketch finds CBS going up against NBC. And while Fallon is impersonating Jim Parsons on the CBS team, Justin Timberlake is doing his best Jimmy Fallon impression for Team NBC. JT does a very funny, exaggerated impression of an awesomely excited about everything Fallon. And on two occasions, it's just too much for the real Fallon to handle. Jim Parsons! Jim Parsons! Are you kidding me? That is how it's done, my man! He's so great, am I right? The first time, he's able to turn and look at the big board to hide his laughter. But the second time, the only place he can hide is crouched down behind his podium. So great, my man. But Steve... <laughs> Number 8. The Leather Man You know that annoying squeaking sound that leather clothes make when you move in them? Well, imagine a whole sketch based on that premise and you have the leather man. You're talking to the wrong guy. I don't like leather. I love leather. It's pretty much a one-joke sketch that works because of how it doesn't quite work. You see, the leather sounds are produced offstage and don't always match in timing with the actor's movements. Not just any kind of snake. These are made from genuine diamondback rattlesnakes, bred... <laughs> Right here on the premises in our shop. The mistiming almost breaks Fallon, but it isn't until Horatio Sands waddles in that Fallon looks like he's really on the verge of completely cracking up, which he does after Sands delivers a line that, based on the look Fallon gives him, might have been improvised on the spot. Why did I give him that whip for his birthday? <laughs> I always treat the customers with... <laughs> Makes no sense, really. <laughs> he also loses it when a rattlesnake bites Horatio on his sands. <laughs> Number 7. Boston Teens, Donnie's Party. But you were supposed to call me when you got down the Irregardless! <laughs> you have been under surveillance. Rachel Dratch and Jimmy Fallon have appeared as Boston teens Denise and Sully in 14 sketches since 1999, and Fallon has managed to get through a number of them without breaking. But not the one from 2000 that featured the teens at a house party hosted by their friend Donnie, played by famous Bostonian Ben Affleck. Evidence clearly shows that you were about to give it up hard to a one Johnny bought a lottie. Fallon starts to go from almost his first line, but once Affleck goes full Boston bro on him, that's when both he and Fallon break. This leads to a few more bros than were probably in the original script. Bro. <laughs> Seriously, bro! Number 6. Gus Chiggins, Old Prospector. If this were a list of the times Jimmy Fallon, Daryl Hammond, Seth Meyers, Horatio Sands, Tracy Morgan, and Chris Kattan all broke character in the same sketch, there might not be many items on it. But the old prospector sketch would be one of them. I ain't going to battle with this stinky old man. I think you need to learn some manners. In a wonderfully ironic twist that suits this list perfectly, it's Fallon who gets the character-breaking party started with his first line. Any questions? 
The group gets separated. Where's the rendezvous point? And once he breaks, everyone else goes with him. Well, not everyone. We were actually quite impressed with all the extras in the scene who managed to keep it together when the stars around them were breaking up. Yes, for the last time. Oh, cinnamon and gravy. <laughs> Number 5. Aquarium Repairman The Aquarium Repairman sketch from 2003 almost didn't make the list. Not because it isn't a hysterical time when Jimmy Fallon broke character, because it most definitely is. However, it almost didn't make the list because Fallon almost made it through the entire sketch without breaking. We got Kung Fu on his chin. Oh, well, well, yeah. We got... Fallon and Horatio Sands play aquarium repairmen who are more interested in making wisecracks than repairing anything. And for most of the sketch, they make their wisecracks without cracking up. We got a... I'm kind of tapped out now. Yeah, yeah, I'm not tapped out too, unfortunately. Not a best work. But just when you think it's over, there's an epilogue scene in a psychiatrist's office, and that's where both Fallon and Sands lose it completely. They both laugh so hard, their fake mustaches come unglued. We got freaking... <laughs> Oxygen molecule joint with 200 and molecules on a covalent bond. <laughs> Number four, more cowbell. The Moore Cowbell sketch from 2000 is one of the most famous sketches in the show's history. Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. Rolling Stone magazine ranked it the ninth best SNL sketch of all time. And we understand why. This sketch has it all. It has Will Ferrell playing the cowbell, it has Christopher Walken asking for more cowbell, and it has Jimmy Fallon trying unsuccessfully not to break. Don't blow this forest, Gene! <laughs> Could be so selfish, Gene. It isn't all his fault, though. According to Fallon, Will Ferrell wore a tighter shirt than he had in rehearsal, which made his gut pop out as he played the cowbell, and, quote, everyone just broke up laughing, and I couldn't stop laughing. I gotta have more cowbell, baby. <laughs> I'd be doing myself a disservice and every member of this band if I didn't perform the hell out of this. Number three, Debbie Downer, Disney World. Debbie Downer was one of the most popular recurring SNL characters of the 2000s. And while there were a number of classic Debbie Downer sketches, probably the most memorable is that first one from back in 2004. Memorable as much for launching an iconic character as for the laughing fit that took over every actor in the sketch, including Jimmy Fallon, of course. You guys hear about that train explosion in Northern Korea? <laughs> the media is so sensitive there, so secretive. <laughs> there are two key moments that get the giggle train going. The first is the wah wah sound that follows Debbie's pessimistic comments. Roy of Siegfried and Roy. He was attacked by his own tiger and suffered devastating injuries. <laughs> Turns out, the sound surprised the cast, which already had them starting to break. Dratch's messed up line was the real point of no return, though. And by the end of the sketch, no one was really holding it together. By the way, it's official. <laughs> I can't have children. Number two, Jeffries. The recurring Jeffrey sketches all feature Jimmy Fallon and whoever is hosting the show that week. Fallon and the host play employees of Jeffrey's Boutique, where the clothes are expensive and the insults are constant. Kind of like Fallon's laughter throughout. What? It's looking for some zero blemish cream and under eye concealer? Concealer? Look, Benicio, the bags under your eyes need to be checked because they don't fit in the overhead compartment. But he isn't alone. The show's host, whether it be Sean Hayes, Pierce Brosnan, or Sean William Scott, also break, albeit not as much as Fallon does. The laughter usually really gets going once either Chris Kattan or Horatio Sands shows up. I've decided to let bygones be bygones and bury the hatchet with this place. Could you find gentlemen direct me no. to the... No. No. <laughs> Come on, fellas! And even if he manages to pull himself together after that, once Will Ferrell rolls in, Fallon is pretty much laughing his way through the rest of the sketch. Going to the Dolce Gabbana show. How fast can you have your bags packed for Milan? Well, I've got my 
my Jack Speed bag packed already. <laughs> my boss meant us. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Lovas As we've learned, making Jimmy Fallon laugh during a sketch isn't very hard to do. But when it comes to the Lovas sketches, that was what they were designed for. Our dear friend Barbara Hernandez <laughs> is the top female archer in the Northeast Division. That's unbelievable. As Will Ferrell told Entertainment Weekly, quote, The basic purpose of every time we did this sketch was to try to make Jimmy Fallon laugh. And to say it worked might be an understatement given how much he laughed the first time they did the sketch, when Drew Barrymore joined them in the hot tub. Thighs twitching in the anticipation of lovemaking that will take place in this hot tub <laughs> in less than 12 minutes. <laughs> I'm, get, I'm getting kind of pruny. I'm out. The next appearance featured Winona Ryder in the jacuzzi with everyone. And while Fallon was able to hold it together longer this time, you can see Farrell working him and eventually breaking him a couple of times. Miguel, you were back at the university uh, traveling through Spain, right? When you met your friend uh, Ted Johnson or something. When you happened to... Thank you very much. 